And then I took and I made one of them on a piece of solderable breadboard. This is the exact same thing. This is the big power transistor. And you notice there's a big chunk of metal on it. What's that chunk of metal called? Heat sink. Because if you're going to pull more than half an amp, it's going to get really, really hot. So you screw a little piece of aluminum to it called a heat sink to allow it to dissipate the heat. There's the relay. There's the little transistor that powers the relay. That's the pickaxe chip, the infrared, the voltage regulator. OK, let's continue. Another view of the same thing. All right. This is the cool part. I'm going to show you how it works, and then we're going to play with it. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to disconnect you. And I need my glasses. What I'm doing here is connecting this to a source of DC. And I'm connecting it to our, we're just going to use this little guy as a demonstration train. And we're going to take the output of that. OK. I'm going to take this. I'm going to hold it in my hand. And I'm pushing the channel up button on the remote control. Do you see the light just came on on the little guy? Now what's going to happen when it gets to the end? Did I stop it? No, the diode stopped it. And if I push either the volume up or the volume down, watch what happens. Nothing. Yep. I pushed the uh, mute button and it told it to stop. I'm going to push the mute button again. It tells it to start up again. And if I Here it goes. And I'm going to slow it down. Speed it back up. That's pretty capable. We've got five bucks in a pickaxe chip. I've got maybe two bucks in a relay. That little infrared sensor is about two or three bucks. The other components, maybe another five bucks. And that'll handle easily a couple of amps. And if you put a bigger heat sink on it, a little fan, probably eight amps. Pretty cool. Let's talk about the software because that's where the magic happens. This is what you have to type into the computer and send to the chip. It's actually going to be on three screens. The first screen is what's called initialization. These three lines simply tell it what's connected to what pin. For example, the motor, that would be that transistor that does the speed, is connected to pin 9. The relay is connected to pin 6. And that infrared receiver is connected to pin 8. These are just little comments. And that allows me to say things like, you know, turn the motor on by saying motor instead of worrying about B3. I won't remember what B3 is. So when you say symbol, motor really means B3. These are what are called variables, which are places that I store uh, values as it's working. This is the cool part down here. Channel up is a 16. So when I push that little remote, I tell it to go get the remote control thing. And if it's a 16, it knows I push channel up. So that I can say, if it's channel up, do this. I don't have to remember what 16 is. And 17 is channel down. 18 is volume up. 19 is volume down. Uh, OK is the same as mute, so that's number 20. Pretty neat. Second part. This is the main set of uh, commands that make it all work. This is just a label called cruise as it's cruising along the track. I could have called it Fred. You can call it anything you want. This line says go to the infrared receiver and if the infrared is volume up or infrared is volume down, what are we going to do? Change direction. And I'll show you that on the next screen. If the infrared is OK, that's that mute button, what it does is it tells it to store the speed it was going but stop it and remember what the speed is so if you push it again it goes back to that speed. Did you notice me doing that? I could tell it to stop. It would stop and then start up the same way. Down here, if infrared equals channel up, then the speed is equal to the speed plus 5. What does that say? If you're pushing the channel up button, increase the speed by 5. And if you wanted to have it react more rapidly, make it go up by 10s or by 20s or by 1s if you wanted it real slow. If the infrared is channeled down, then the speed becomes 5 less. 
and then go back up to cruise. Stay in that loop and just keep watching for the remote control. Finally, these are what are called subroutines. Do you remember I had something that said change direction? What does change direction do? It says go to the deceleration part, which slows it down, toggle the relay. What does toggle do? If it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. But do you notice before we toggled the relay, what did we do to the train? We stopped it. You don't want to toggle the relay before you slow it down. Then what do we do? Pause for a thousand. Anybody remember what a thousand's worth? One second. A thousand milliseconds. So pause a second. Go to acceleration, speed it back up, and then go back up again. If we want it to accelerate, this just says go from the slowest speed to the set speed, slowly speed up. This one does the opposite, slowly speed down. That's the whole thing. Don't remember where I left you. There it goes. So on accelerate, remember we left it going very slowly. How do I make it go faster? I just hold this channel up button. There it goes. Slow it down. If I press that mute or OK button, stop, but remember how fast you were going. Push it again. Reverse. Decelerate. Toggle the relay. Pause a second. Accelerate. Yes? I wanted to accelerate the vehicle like slower. I just changed the figure on step. Uh, I would put a, if you wanted it to be slower, yeah, you could either change the step or you could put a pause in here. Yeah, you could make it really, really slow if you wanted to. And if you did step 20 or 30, it would accelerate or decelerate much more rapidly. Now the really, okay, does that make sense? I'm not expecting you to internalize it all, but you don't have to because if you want to play with this, it's all on my webpage and you can go ahead and copy it and play with it. Here's the really cool part. Going further. Didn't you used to hate that when your teacher said, we're going to go further now? Okay. What if we wanted to create a point-to-point -point controller? All we have to do is add those lines. Let's look at what it does. I can take that code I already wrote that's doing that, and I created another label called auto. Again, I could call it John. It doesn't matter anything. Set the speed to 200, which is pretty fast. Go sub acceleration, speed up, pause 8,000. What's that going to do? Go for eight seconds, then decelerate, toggle the relay, and go back and do it again. Let's see if we can actually get it to program. This, of course, never works when I'm in front of a group. Okay, here's our original program. Let me get it up to full screen. And by the way, I didn't mention this. You know how expensive the software is? It's free. This whole pickaxe series is, was developed in Great Britain for use in schools. And they use it in Great Britain and New Zealand and Australia. And there's a ton of people that are using this. It's free and it's very, very good. Here's the original program that I had up on the screen. Remember all the initialization and all that stuff? I've got another version. All it has in it, remember those extra lines? And what we're going to try to do here Let's see, I've got you plugged in, and I've got you, let me see if I can get this over to here. Okay, I've got this guy, I'm going to reprogram him. This is going to cross our fingers, hit program. Downloading program, I'm putting a new program into the same chip. And depending upon which end of this track it stopped at, it might wait eight seconds before it does anything. We'll see. Of course it's going to embarrass me. It's going to wait eight seconds. It thinks it's down there. But do you see what's happening? These are the variables. One of the things I really love about this program, particularly for kids or people that are kids in terms of being beginners at this, there it goes. Remember the speed was 200. That's pretty fast. And when it gets to the end, in a total of eight seconds from when it started, what's it going to do? But what's the numbers? There goes the acceleration. Did you see that number changing? Now that number is going to slow down. See, it's decelerating now, even though it's already at the end. 
Now, if we wanted it to do the back and forth and have less time to sit at the end, what would we change? That 8,000 we would change to? 1,000 or 2,000 or whatever. Let's, let's try five because, I, well, let's try four. So let's go back here. I'm going to change that eight to a four. Now, I did that without my glasses, so it's a great risk. I think I'm right. Program. Now, notice it stopped. As soon as you start to program it, it stops doing whatever it was doing. 